Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Machine Tutorials. We're going to continue in this tutorial and look at some of the effects. We've got a machine, so today I'm going to be looking at the EQ and filter kind of plugins that we've got coming with machine. And I've got this loop here, and we're just going to go in and EQ some of these sounds. I'll give you a quick play. So it's just one of the machine uh, kits, really, uh, the Plafora kit. And I've swapped some of the sounds out for some hits that maybe, you know, might have one or two problem frequencies and we can discuss how we can control those using the EQ. So I'm going to start off with this kick drum here. So a couple of things with this, I know it's playing this loop. We could just go in and edit that sample very quickly. So I notice here, if we look down here, this sample. Uh, it's not, the start point isn't quite accurate, it's not quite on the beat, so go in here, it's a kick drum, especially for kick drums, but pretty much most sounds I would edit the start point, so we've not got that kind of gap at the start there, so kind of zoomed right in. And that's a little bit tighter, and I wouldn't mind editing the envelope of this sound, so I'm just going to solo it very quickly. Have a look at this envelope around here. At the moment, we've not got an envelope on there, so let's convert this to an ADSR envelope. Take some of that release off, take that sustain right down, and let's use the decay to control the tail of that kick drum. So it's just a bit tighter, a bit snappier, so unsolo that. And sometimes I realise with kick drums, there's quite a lot of boxy kind of sound in the kind of mids. And um, we can control that using an EQ. So, so let's load up this EQ here and solo this kick drum again. Just discuss some of the functions we have on offer here. I might just reduce the size of the mixer so we can see this EQ a bit better. So we've got a couple of different bands dealing with different frequency ranges. So low kind of frequency and then we've got, this is the gain, this is the frequency we're going to be affecting and this is by how much we're going to be affecting it. So at the moment it's on 0 dB. If we pull the frequency down to say 60 hertz or 89, 90 hertz, push that up we're going to be boosting the low frequency in that kick drum and so that's like a low shelf really and we've got a high shelf as well so it can kind of boost the high frequencies and then we've got two mid bands we've got one dealing with the lower mids and one dealing with the higher mids and with these we get an extra control we get this frequency and gain again But we also get this width. So this is the width of the band that we're going to be affecting, the frequency band. So round to the left, it's a very thin frequency band. So it's better for kind of sur surgical, kind of precise EQ. And then if we push this band up, we get it's going to be affecting a much wider frequency band. So the low mid and the high mid work in the same way with this with bandwidth that we have here. We also have this gain control. So this controls the kind of output of the EQ. So if we were looking at this level over here and the kind of kicks at minus 2.1 dB, we start boosting some lows. It's actually much louder now. And so we could actually just by boosting those lows, we could actually bring down the whole sound there. So. So although we've boosted some low frequency in that kick drum, the overall level of the kick drum is actually the same because we've controlled the EQ with this gain here. So 
let's go in and EQ this kick drum a little bit and get rid of some of those maybe more resonant frequencies. And the way for doing this, you might have seen this before, you might be familiar with this method, is to kind of sweep for those resonant frequencies. So I'm going to use the low mid and the high mid here because we've got these bandwidth controls so we can, can kind of notch out or boost very precise amounts of uh, frequency by using a very thin bandwidth. So let's go and have a look at, say, let's start off with the kind of lower mids. And what we'll do is we'll boost this for now. We'll find where those frequencies are because this will, by boosting this low mid here, this will really kind of like accentuate that frequency area that might be a bit of a problem frequency area. And then by hearing it a bit, by boosting this, we'll be able to hear it a bit easier and then we can notch it out. So I'm going to boost this quite high. And I'm going to reduce the width of this band as well. So it's quite precise. maybe around there around about 306 Hertz increase that width let's get rid of some of that so we still got a nice amount of low end in the kit but just the kind of lower mids where maybe some of our bass sounds might start sitting and maybe your clap and stuff like that or your snare just freeing up a bit of space there in the kind of mix. So let's look at these high mids now. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to boost this high mid band a quite a large amount. And I'm going to shrink the width right down. So it's very thin width. And let's move this frequency control around until we hear some kind of frequencies that we may want to get rid of. So maybe around there, it's kind of just around 2K. So let's do the same thing again and just pull that control down. Push the width up maybe. So we've got rid of quite a few kind of maybe harsher frequencies. And when we play this in context with the rest of the sounds, and then mute and unmute the CQ. It's just the sound is a lot softer now and there's more space for those other sounds on top and stuff like that. So that's the kick drum. Let's now take a look at this hi-hat. So solo this. Let's go in and EQ this in the same way as we did with the kick. Let's load up this EQ. If you notice as well, if you play this like on headphones or if you turn it quite loud, there's a bit of low frequency content in that EQ. We don't really want that. So let's get rid of that. And we could obviously sweep this up and down, but I reckon just cutting any kind of low frequency from about 300 hertz and below cutting all of that would be all right and let's see if there's any potential harsh frequencies in the kind of high mids on this hi-hat so let's pull this band make, make this band width very thin again and boost this gain we can hear some of those quite harsh frequencies there And so round about 2.5K, it's quite a harsh frequency. So let's get rid of some of that. So let's mute and unmute this EQ. So here we're getting rid of the low end and also that kind of harsh, really resonant frequency in the high mids on that hi-hat. So, and solo that. So 
So again, it's just making it softer, it's creating more space for the other sounds. And yeah, we're sweeping off any of the low frequency content in that hi hat. So just keep the low fruit just keep that low end free for like the kick drum and the bass sound and stuff. So now let's take a look at the filter plugin that we get with machines. So I'm gonna load in a sound in here, I'm gonna load in maybe massive. And just keep the default patch that we have, a sawtooth wave. And let's just record in some chords very quickly. So, record. Play. And let's go ahead and quantize that. Quantize the plane was that bad, like even quantizing didn't sort it out. So, all right, some basic chord sounds. Take it out of record now, and let's look at this filter. So, I'm going to solo, I'm going to solo this massive instance here. So with this filter, we've got four different types of mode. We've got low pass filter, band pass, high pass, and not. So low pass filter, it's only gonna let the low frequencies through, and that's determined by this cutoff point here, so. And we've got this resonance control as well. So what resonance is gonna do, it's gonna boost the frequency is going to boost the frequency around the cutoff frequency point. We're going to get these boosts if we push this resonance up. So now, it's with a high resonance, and then so with high resonance values, you get that quite pronounced sort of filter sweeps when you mess around with this cutoff control. So. So this is a low pass filter. We've also got band pass. So this is just gonna let a frequency band through, similar to the way we're controlling the band width with the EQ. Except we don't get a we don't get a control for the width of the band with this filter. We just it's letting this band through, and the the band or the frequency band is determined by this cutoff frequency. So. And again, pushing that resonance up, it's gonna be boosting frequencies around this cut off frequency point, so. Then we've got high pass as well. So only letting the high frequencies through and then you can sweep it right up to, is that about 12K there? And then the final one is notch. So what notch does, it notches out a frequency. Uh, I find this less useful on this filter because we only get a cut off control. We don't get a control for the, the width of the notch, uh, the how much frequency we're gonna dip out. We don't get a resonance either, so. It's quite good for that sort of, it almost sounds like a phaser when you sweep that cut off frequency up and down, so. I think this filter actually becomes really useful when we look at the modulation section and also combine with some effects. So let's add, let's actually, let's, let's apply this modulation over here that we have to the right of this filter section. Let's get into this. So the moment the amount is zero, I'm gonna push him out up to full and we get the option of either having an LFO, a synced LFO, or an envelope. I'm gonna look at this synced LFO here, and I'm gonna take it from a notch filter to start off with a low pass. So now, I'm 
So now what we've done is we've applied an LFO to this filter and this is controlling this cutoff frequency and it's kind of moving it up and down like that. Um, and with the LFO synced, it means it's syncing to the tempo of the track. So it's quite nice and we can play with the speed, the LFO shape. The phase is kind of like, I think that's the delay, the start of the LFO gets pushed back a little bit there. So So it sounds pretty cool if let's add now, say a beat delay to that. So all we've done is loaded up the, the default instance of Massive, so it's just a sawtooth wave, playing some chords and some filters and beat delays. Uh, we get quite a cool sound. So let's actually mute that sound for now. So another thing I wanted to look at was applying that filter in the same way, but to some vocals. So let's go ahead now and unmute this second group that I've got here and look at this radio voice kit. It's just another one of the machine groups. Uh, and. I noticed on pad nine we've got this couple of different vocal Have samples in here. Like this? this record is dedicated to all the lovers of the 808. This record is dedicated to all the lovers of the 909. So we've got this this vocal sample. So let's just kind of stretch out a note here. So. This record is dedicated to all the lovers of the 909. This record is dedicated to all the lovers of the 909. So let's go ahead and let's go. Go and chop this sample up a little bit. So let's go into this slice mode and go into detect, increase the sensitivity, and let's just hit apply. And then this might get the, the vocal a little bit more in time here. So to all the lovers of the 909. This record is dedicated to all the lovers of the 909. This record is dedicated to let's highlight all of these. Let's um Let's quantize those. To all the lovers of the 909. This record is dedicated to all the lovers of the dedicated to all this record is dedicated to all this record is dedicated. So uh quite simple. We could probably spend a bit more time and get that vocal a little bit tighter. Get rid of some of the double hits that we've got here. But just as a very quick way for getting a vocal in here. And let's look at this. This record is dedicated to all lovers of the eight. This record is dedicated to all lovers of the 808. So we've got this vocal sample in here and let's have a look, another look at the filter that we've got here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a delay to this vocal. To all this record is dedicated to all to this record is dedicated to this record is dedicated to this record is dedicated to this getting a little bit messy here. So let's now go ahead and load up this filter again. Stick it on a low pass pull the cutoff frequency down and push the modulation up. Let's look at this LFO synced again. So. So as you can see, we can get quite creative with that filter used in combination with a couple of the other effects and also using this modulation here in the LFO. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. 
Any questions, please give us a shout. And also get yourself over to our website, machineskills.com. Got tons more tutorials on net instruments. Machine on there. And thanks for watching. All right, cheers.